to begin with. Okay, so absolute value, you probably have seen it in the past. A lot of times students have done stuff with absolute value, but they don't really know what it is and what it's used for. So uh, the basic idea, there's three possibilities. And when I, when I teach, I go through, I'm using what's called OneNote, which is a part of the Microsoft Office suite. And I have a tablet, so I can just write over it, so, which is nice because I'm left-handed, so I don't have to, I don't write over. You're never going to see my ugly hand. And I don't have to get a bottle of Windex out and erase everything. That's another nice thing. Then I can use whatever colors I want and highlight and all kinds of stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. So this is OneNote. And then I record these on Camtasia is a uh, program. Then that takes it to a YouTube link is what it does. So here's the, the possibility. So you could have an absolute value of a positive number. Now what I want you all to do, because I want you to understand what an absolute value is. So on the number line I put, I want you to just put a zero and then go one, two, three, four, five, and just label that like this. So what absolute value is, is it's a distance. So it's how far zero is from five. And that's an easy question to answer. How far away is zero and five? It's five units, right? So the answer to that problem is the absolute value is five, and it's a distance, okay? You probably learned in the past that when you have an absolute value, you always get a positive number, right? Okay? That's not the best way to learn it. What it technically is is it's distance. So that means the distance from zero and 5 is 5. And since distance is positive, that's why absolute value is positive. That's what it represents. The reason we came up with this mathematical symbol is because a lot of times formulas need to have positive numbers. Okay, There's lots of things like it doesn't make sense to have negative numbers like for time and weight. Okay, Nobody weighs negative 100 pounds. So there's things that are positive and things that are negative. Okay, the next one, what I want you to do on this, just put a zero and then go to negative three. One, two, negative three. And again, what you're doing on this is you're looking at that distance right there. So that distance is three. Okay, it's not negative three. Distance is positive, so it's always three. So this means the distance between zero and negative three is going to be three. Okay, that's what absolute value is. Okay, the next problem is how far is zero from itself? What's the answer? Zero. zero. You're already there. Okay, so that distance is zero. So that just is saying the distance from zero to zero is zero like that. And those are the only possibilities that you have. So you either get zero for an answer at the smallest or you get a positive answer. Okay, and it's a distance. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, all right. So I don't expect you, like if I wanted you for whatever reason to do the absolute value negative 15, I don't expect you to put that on a number line. I expect you to give me the answer, which is what? 15. Okay, you do that in your head, but you need to know what that means, of course. Okay, so a couple of basic observations. Distance is always a positive number. Okay, there is no such thing as negative distances. Okay, the least uh, distance can be a zero. Okay, a distance can be zero, but it can't be negative. Okay, so distance can never be a negative number. Okay, and uh, what we're doing with absolute value, we're going to do stuff with, with uh, equations and stuff. We try in this class to do topics that you need for college algebra. That's, that's what we're trying to do is build you up to college algebra. Okay, so if you have the absolute value of a positive, what do you get? What kind of answer? Positive. positive. You get a positive number. You can just put a plus sign. How about the absolute value of a negative? What do you get? Positive. How about the absolute value of zero? What do you get? Zero. That's it. Those are the only possibilities there are. Okay. Okay. So now what I'd like you guys to do is just go ahead yourself on number two. Go ahead and just write the answer. Do them in your head. Now, there's a couple of them that I didn't go over, so I want to see what your thought process is on particularly that last row, like D, D E, and F. And then we'll uh, take a look on that in a minute and see what you get on that, okay, what I taught you how to do, okay? All right, what's the answer to A? 13. What's the answer to B? Okay, oh, come on, why is this thing not writing all of a sudden? It's because it's Windows 10, that's why. Okay, you're going to see me have to do this sometime because of Windows 10, mostly. Uh, close a program and start it again. Okay, so uh, this one's 13. Okay, what's the answer to the next one? Seven, Seven. what's the answer to the next one? Yeah. Zero, okay? So those are the cases that we went through and we basically looked at. What did you come up with for D? 
13. Yeah, negative 13. So what this problem is really saying is you know the absolute value of 13 is 13. But what this negative is saying is you can really think of it as a negative 1 times the answer. And anytime you take a number and multiply it by negative 1, it changes the sign. So that one is negative 13. Okay, how about the next one? What'd you get? Did you get positive 7 or negative 7? It's negative 7, okay? See, a lot of times students say, oh, two, ne two negatives, that makes a positive. That's a lie, okay? If you think two negatives make a positive, it's a lie. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It depends on the situation. So what this problem is really saying is you got negative 7 times negative 1. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7, right? And then if you multiply any number by negative 1, it changes the sign, so it's negative 7, okay? So that's different. If you saw a mathematical expression with parentheses, you know what the answer to that would be? That would be 7. This thing right here would be 7 because that's just saying the opposite of negative 7. But that's, that's not absolute value. Absolute value has a certain meaning to it. Okay, how about the last one? What'd you get? Zero. zero. Okay, there's no such thing as negative zero. There's just zero. Okay, zero's neutral. It's not positive or negative. So here's the idea. So if you had a big, messy expression in here, I don't care what I put in here. Okay, you know, is the answer to that problem negative or positive? Just by looking at it. Negative. How do you know it's negative? There's an absolute value in front of the symbol. That's how you know. It doesn't matter what's in there. It doesn't make any difference. It's just that's going to come straight down. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay? So it all depends on where those negatives are. Okay? The next thing I want to look at just a little bit is show you the definition. Now, you can get by in this class without knowing the definition of absolute value, but for higher math, Higher math becomes more technical. When you start taking college-level math, it's a lot more technical. So the definition of absolute value is this. Okay, what it means is the absolute value of some number A is just A if A is positive. When I say A is greater than or equal to zero, that means that it's a positive number. So here's what this really says. If you had a positive number and absolute value, you know what you do? You erase the symbols. That's it. The symbols go away. That's what that says. What this piece over here says, this is saying A is less than zero, so that's saying you have a negative number. And what this is saying is if you do the absolute value of a negative number, what you do is the answer is the opposite of what that number is, so what's the opposite of negative eight? That's technically what the definition is. Now that sometimes is kind of abstract for students to understand, at this level, but that definition says if A is positive, erase the symbols. The answer is done. If A is negative, take away the symbols and change the sign. Does that make any sense? Okay, so that's what the definition of absolute value is, is if A is positive, the answer is itself. If A is a negative number, the answer is the opposite, and the opposite of a negative is a positive. That's why you always get a positive answer. Does that make any sense? Okay, all right. Like I said, that's not as important at this level of the class, but it's very important higher level and college, more in college level. Okay, so what we're going to do next here is do equations. So we're going to solve equations, and hopefully this will review the absolute value, and then it'll also review equation solving, because sometimes students get in this class and they don't remember the algebraic process of solving equations. Okay, the meaning of this problem is, is really this. Um, what this, what this problem means is what I want you to do is put a, draw a number line and put a zero, and then put a nine there, and then put, not a, no, that's positive nine there, and negative nine there. So what the real meaning of this problem is, is you're looking for a number so that the distance to, from zero is nine. So what's one answer? Nine would be one answer. How far is zero from nine? Nine. There's another answer. What's the other answer? Negative nine. Yeah, the idea is, is that distance right there is nine, and the distance from negative nine to zero is nine also. So there's two answers. So the way we write this, if we have two answers, you usually write this in what we call a solution set. Okay, when you do your homework on my math lab, when you do a solution set, they'll usually already have the braces there. You do what's called a set brace, and then you just list the two numbers separated with a comma. Usually the negative one and then the positive one like that. Now the reason this is the right answer is because if you go back to the original equation 
And if you just replace x with negative 9, well, what's the absolute value of negative 9? It's 9 like it's supposed to be, right? And then if you do the absolute value of 9, doesn't that give you 9 also? So there's two answers to the problem. If you do the absolute value of negative 9, it's 9. If you do the absolute value of 9, that's 9. Does that make any sense? Okay. Now, those are, if you're going to study science, you know, absolute value shows up in all kinds of places just here and there. And it's mo mainly used to represent when we need to represent something's positive. When it's absolutely necessary for an answer to be positive, that's one of the things we use absolute value for. Okay, let's try the next one. We're going to do this in our head. Okay, can uh, anybody give me one answer? There's two answers to this problem. Negative four. Negative four is a good one. Okay, that's good because negative four plus six is two. Absolute value of two is two. There is another answer. It's always harder for students to get the second one. Anybody have any idea what that might be? What? What? What did you say back there? You may be right. Say, just talk louder. You don't know. Okay. I thought I heard you say negative 8. No. <laughs> I'm hearing things. The other answer is negative 8. Okay. Now I'll explain why. Okay. All right. So the solution are, and we're doing this in our head. We're going to learn how to do it, you know, just by algebra here in a minute. So that's negative 8, negative 4. Those are the two answers. Now, let's look at why this is right. So if you go back to the original problem, and first of all, replace x with negative 8. And we're going to see if that gives 2. And then we're going to replace x with negative 4. So you have two answers. You can check and verify it two times. Okay, negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. But what's the absolute value of negative 2? It's 2. It's 2. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2. But what's the absolute value of 2? It's 2 also. So those are why those are the two answers. Okay, if you can't do it in your head, don't worry about it. You're going to learn a process that will get, get that figured out for you anyway. And that's what we're going to learn. Okay, all right. So generally what I'm saying is if you have a, an equation with absolute value, it, generally you get two answers in most cases. Sometimes you get no answer. Sometimes you might get one answer. just kind of depends on the situation. So one of the things I'm going to do um, on this, I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation. This is like as complicated as it'll get. Now, if you were going to try to do this problem in your head, you could actually, if you thought about this long enough, you could figure out at least one of the answers will come to you. Does anybody have an idea what we might be able to plug in for X just in your head that might make it work? If you have an answer, speak loud. I wear hearing aids, so if you're in the back, you've got to talk a little louder. Okay. Any idea? What are you doing? You're doing 6 plus the result of this. There's something you can plug in for X. What do you think? 1. Let's try 1. Okay, 1 minus 4 is uh, negative 3. Okay. How about any other idea? Two. Two? Yeah. Okay, two will work. Okay, what else? Six. I heard someone say six. Six is the easiest one. What's six minus four? Two. Two. What's two times two? Four. What's four plus six? Ten. Okay, so I mean, you can tell you're right when you're solving the equation. Now, this is what I want you to write on your paper, is I'm going to take you through the process that you do, because you aren't always going to be able to do these in your head. It's rare that you can do them in your head. So I'm just going to rewrite the problem, and I'm going to kind of take you through the very basic steps that you do. The first thing that you do is you isolate the absolute value. Now, what I mean by that is that x minus 4 needs to be by itself on one side of the equal sign. So what that means is algebraically, you've got to make the 6 go away, and you've got to make the 2 go away. And you've got to do that correctly. You've got to dig into your background a little bit. How do you make adding 6 go away? Subtract 6, and you do the same thing to both sides, one thing at a time. So what you're going to do is you can write this like this. You just subtract 6, subtract 6 like that. That makes that go away. That makes that go to 0. So what you would have then is you would have 2 times x minus 4 is equal to 4, like that. Okay? Now what we would do is you want that to be by itself. How do you make that 2 go away? You divide. Why do you divide? Because that 2 is multiplying. The opposite of multiplying is what? Dividing. So you divide both sides by 2. That's kind of how you do basic equations. So you divide both sides by 2, and then that's going to give you, that goes away, giving you absolute value of x minus 4 is equal to 2 like that. 
Okay, so that's how you have to start the problem. You've got to isolate that absolute value. Now what you do is you set up two equations. So what you do is you just write down the x minus 4. You wipe away the absolute value, and you pretend like it's positive. So you say, what would make x minus 4 be 2? And then the other equation you set up is you pretend like, okay, what would make x minus 4 negative 2? The reason you do that is because the absolute value of negative 2 goes to 2 anyway. Now, those are the two equations you ultimately solve. So in this case, you would add 4 to both sides. That would cross out. That would give x equals 6. So somebody told me they did six, figured out 6 in their head. That's one answer. Okay. Then over here, if you want to get rid of the subtract 4, again, you add 4 to both sides. That's going to go away. That gets x equals 2. I believe someone else said that x equals 2 was an answer to. Okay. So that's how you do that. You write your answer just in a set. 2, 6, and then they both check. Okay, now that is as complicated as it'll get. Okay, now we're going to work several of these things out, you know, before class is over, but we're going to build up to this level, but that's as advanced as it pretty well gets, like that. Okay, does that look okay? Does the doing things to both sides of the equation look like stuff that's in your background? Because I never know. I have no clue when I teach this class, so we, I try to, I don't assume anything. Okay, let's go to the next page and let's do. Some problems are a little easier than that, and just kind of get that out of the way. Okay, so uh, basically, what would happen on on this problem? Um, you're gonna you the first thing that you always want to do is you want to make sure that your absolute value is isolated. So what that means is that part of the equation. See, there's nothing in front of the absolute value, right? There's nothing at the side of it, so it's isolated. So if there's nothing outside of absolute value, then step one is taken care of. But you have to make sure that that's set up. And then once it's isolated, then the second thing you do is you just set up your two equations. That's step two. So what you do is you do 20x equals 72. Okay, you're assuming that 20x is positive. Okay, then what you do is you figure out what would make 20x negative 72. The reason you do that is because of this, and it's actually real simple. The absolute value of 72 is 72, right? The absolute value of negative 72 is also 72. So you're trying to figure out what two numbers cause that to happen. Okay, so now you've got to dig into your background a little bit. How, how do you get x by itself on this equation? What do you do to both sides? Divide by 20, okay? Remember, that's a number in front of x that's multiplied, so you have to do things one step at a time to both sides. Okay, so that'll isolate. That gives 1x, or just x. Then we have 72 over 20. Would that be a finished answer, or is there more you can do? You can simplify it. You can reduce the fraction. Okay, you've got to figure out numbers that divide into 72 and 20. One possibility is 2. Another possibility is 4. You can do it as many steps as you want to. I'm going to do 4 and see if that takes us down all the way. Okay. The way I divide by 4 in my head is I take, cut it in half twice. That's what dividing by 4 is, is halving something twice. What's half of 72? 36. 36. What's half of 36? 18. 18. Okay. If you can't do that, do it the side of your paper. So that's 18. And then 20 divided by 4 is 5, so that's your first answer. Okay. Then what you do is you go to the second equation. Well, you're going to get the same thing, except it's going to be negative. You're going to divide both sides by 20. That's going to cross that out. So now you have x equals negative 72 over 20. It's the same problem, except you're just going to reduce it again. So you can divide by 4 again. So you would end up getting negative 18 fifths like that. Whoops, negative 18 fifths like that. So those are your two answers. So the way you write your answer to this problem is you do a solution set. You say negative 18 fifths and 18 fifths like that, and then that's your final answer to the problem. Okay? All right? That's a real simple one to do. It's already isolated, so set your two equations up and solve. Then if you've got a pretty good foundation for solving basic equations, it won't be that hard to do. Okay? Now, let's do a check. Now, generally, when you check, you want to check both answers. Uh, I'm not always going to take the time to check every one, but I do want you on this problem to go ahead and check both answers. So we have 20 times x equals 72. We've got to verify that. And we also got to check that 20 times the second answer 
is 72 also. So I'm going to plug in these two answers. I'm going to plug in uh, negative 18 fifths. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to plug in 18 fifths like that. And do not go running for your calculator. You don't need your calculator. You need to go back and learn how to do fractions and learn how to do fractions the right way. So whenever you multiply fractions, what you can do is you can go straight across and reduce, or you can go sideways. Sideways is easier. So like, what's 20 divided by 4? That's 5. So 20 over 5 is, or 20 over 5, whoops, is 4. Okay, then you do 4 times negative 18, which is negative 72. And what's that? 72, because it's an absolute value, so it's right. That proves that that's the right answer to the problem. Okay, when you go over here, it's the same thing. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 4 times 18 is 72, so you have absolute value of 72 is 72, so it's right. So you have the ability, regardless of what equation you ever solved, to tell you're right. It's always verifiable. Everything is. Okay, and you want to learn how to do that, and if you take the time to go that extra mile and check your work, you'll understand what you're doing on these problems ten times better than if you don't do that. So trust me on that and think about that a little bit. Okay, is there any questions or anything that, I need to, that you need me to clarify? A lot of that's kind of background stuff from your equation solving. Uh-huh. Yeah, what I did here is I, what I'm doing is reducing a fraction. Okay, so whenever you're multiplying fractions, you can, we call that cross-canceling, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 24 times. Okay, so 20 divided by 5 is 4. I'm reducing. Then I go 4 times 18 to get to 72. So I'm reducing before I multiply. The other choice would be to take 20 times 18, um, and then, uh, which I think is 360, and then divide that by 5. You still get 72. Okay, it still works. Okay, But it's easier to reduce because the numbers are small. Okay, so let's uh, go to the next one. Let's try to do several of these kind of today to wrap this up. Okay, question number one, is that isolated? Yes or no, is that absolute value isolated? Yes, okay, so what do you do? If it's isolated, you set up two equations. You say x plus 1 equals 9, okay, then what's the other equation? X plus negative 9, okay. Remember, the reason we do that is because the absolute value of negative 9 turns back into 9 anyway. Okay. Now, these are easy equations. How do you solve x plus 1 equals 9? I mean, you can do that in your head, but what do you do to both sides? Subtract 1. Okay. That gets rid of the 1. You get x equals 8. So one of the answers to that problem is x equals 8. If you go over here. You subtract 1 from both sides. You're going to get x equals negative 10. Okay, like that. So the solution set on that is negative 10 and 8, like that. Okay. Yes? Like doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter, but I usually just do numerically the smallest one, then the largest one, like that. Okay? All right? That one's pretty easy to set up. Okay? And then when you go through and check this, you just do, you check the, um, the negative 10 plus 1 and see if that's 9. And then you also check the second answer and you do 8 plus 1 in absolute value and see if that's 9. There's a lot of times the simple ones you can check in your head. Okay, so negative 10 plus 1, and what I always see, and I'm, while I'm thinking of this, a lot of times students get in this class and without a calculator, they don't know how to do negative 10 plus 1. Okay, think of money. Money should solve all of your woes. What does that mean? You have negative $10 in the bank. You know what that means, right? You're in the hole. Then you go to the bank and give, the do give a dollar to the bank. Are you still in the hole or out of the hole? You're still in the hole, and you're in the hole by $9, okay? Think of money if, you, if you're rusty on this, because it's very common for students to, have, to be a little shaky on this beginning. Well, that's 9, isn't it, okay? Then this one, 8 plus 1 is 9, so that's 9 also. There you're right, okay? I can tell you're right. Do it, all right? Okay, let's do a, a few more of these to kind of finish up. Okay, question number one, and I keep stressing this because it's what you always ask, and it's what students always do wrong on these problems. Is that absolute value isolated, yes or no? no? No. What do you need to get rid of so it is isolated? The 4. How do you get rid of the 4? You subtract. You undo adding by subtracting. It's an opposite operation. It makes that go to 0. So one, you know, one thing to both sides, Okay, like that. So now what you'd have is that would come down to give you 8x 
and then that would be 6, like that, okay? So we got that. Now, don't go through and start dividing by 8. Set your two equations up. Okay, so your two equations are 8x equals 6. Tell me what the other equation is. Okay, now divide by 8. If you do things out of order, you're going to mess up. There's a certain order to what you do. So now what you want to do is divide by 8 there. Okay, that would reduce that down to x. And then 6 eighths reduces down to 3 fourths. You can do that in your head. What you're doing is dividing 6 and 8 by 2. So 3 fourths is one answer. Then over here, it's the same thing. You divide by 8, so you get x equals negative 3 fourths. Okay, like that. So your two answers on this problem are negative 3 fourths and 3 fourths. Okay? Now, one thing that students think a lot of times, they think, oh, if I get 3 fourths, negative 3 fourths has to be an answer. That is not true. Look at the problem above. You didn't get 8 and negative 8. You got two totally different answers. So sometimes the answers are the same but opposite. Sometimes they aren't. So, you know, don't make assumptions. Just work it out. That's what you want to do. Okay? All right, let's move on and do this one, and I'll give you a chance maybe to do just a couple of these to wrap us up. So what would be the first thing you would do on number 10? Subtract 4. Isolate the absolute value. Don't forget that. So subtract 4 from both sides. Okay, that'll cross that out. When you do that, bring the absolute value down. I'm not ready to take that off yet, so you get this. Okay, now what do you do? Set up two equations. One is equal to 2. The other one's equal to negative 2. That's the key, right? Then it's just background. Do you have background for pretty decent equation solving skills? Okay, so if you do solve this equation, you're getting x by itself, and you don't want to do this out of order. When you're solving that, get rid of the 8 by doing what? Subtracting. Then get rid of the 5 by doing what? Dividing. Dividing. Do it in order, okay? Save that number that's in front of x for the last thing you do when you solve a basic equation. So you can subtract 8 from both sides. That's going to give 5x equals negative 6. Then you can divide both sides by 5. So one of your answers is negative 6 fifths. Okay, like that. Okay? And then we do this over here. Same thing. You would subtract 8 from both sides. We get 5x here. Here's a little arithmetic review thing right here. Think money. You're in the hole $2. Subtracting 8 means you're taking more money out of the bank. So where are you? You are 10 in the hole. You're starting 2 in the hole. You're going 8 more in the hole. You're 10 in the hole. Okay? Money should help you solve any woes you have about negative numbers, I hope. Okay, so negative 10 divided by 5 is going to be negative 2. So the two answers to that problem then are going to be negative 2 and negative 6 fifths like that. Okay? All right. So there's a lot of things as we start this stuff off today. Think about things that you feel rusty about. I, it's very common for negative numbers fractions to be kind of a problem. So those are things that we kind of review as we go, but we don't, I don't have time to teach them really. Okay? So those are things you need to kind of let me know if you need a little bit of help with. So then you just write the answer that way. Okay? So that'll, that'll be enough for today. Bring this back next time, and uh, we'll finish this up. There's not that much more in this section. It's pretty short. And we'll I'll give you the handouts next Monday when you're here then. Okay? And let's see, those of you that signed up for the 025, 10-minute break, and we are in, I think, 210. I think, if I remember right. Yeah, 210. So those of you that are in math to uh, 025, um, 210. You just wait by 210. I'll be over there so I'm going to get everything in the tack down, okay? We don't need a pencil tack. No, we'll do that twice. You're welcome to if you want to, but you don't have to. Yes.
What was that? What was that? Uh, 210. Oh, so it's just that hall. It's a computer um, room. Okay. okay. I'll be there in a few minutes. What's that? What class are you guys If you enrolled in the 025, you go to 210. It's just right down the hall. It might be locked to this computer. Good. How are you doing? I'm not doing too bad. Good. Bye. Yeah, me too. I always try to get that, like to get that first week out of the way. Mm -hmm. What are you teaching in here? 055. That's what I just got. Done. Everything works. That's good That's news. Good. I went into my classroom yesterday and I tried to get plug in using the HDMI. It works, but there was lines through the whole screen. See, I have that problem. I'm I've had not messing with every, every class I've taught this semester, I've had some kind of issue with something. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I had a, they hooked an HDMI and it was blinking and blinking and blinking, so I called the number and as soon as I talk, talked to your girl, it just fixed itself. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. That kind of a turnaround. I didn't even bother trying to talk to anybody else. <laughs> so they didn't even need to come. They didn't even need to come. But just, um, <laughs> I told her, I said, okay, I'll make contact. I guess that's it. <laughs> 